you know, when you're young, like your early 20s or maybe you're younger than that, 18, 19 years old, you're just viewed as a kid. A kid who doesn't know much about anything, especially when it comes to money. I mean, I definitely didn't know much about money at that age. All I really knew was that I needed to focus on getting a high paying job so I wouldn't have to worry about money. Outside of that, I was pretty clueless. And you know, the crazy thing is, we're not expected to know much about money at that age. Like seriously, your lack of knowledge and money at that age is considered to be a normal thing. But that's the age where we're about to start our own lives and get out on our own and step into the real world and pay bills and be financially responsible. So my question to you is, why are we not expected to know more about money at that age? That's okay. I don't really know the answer to that question either, but it's that exact reality that's left me with so many things that I wanna share with you. So many things that I wish I knew about money when I was in my 20s. You know, I wish I knew what it truly meant to live paycheck to paycheck earlier in life. I didn't find out or hear about this phrase paycheck to paycheck until I was already over 20 years old. And by the time I heard the phrase, it was completely foreign to me. And it wasn't because I didn't know anybody who was in that situation, but it was because money was something that was not supposed to be talked about like period growing up. Besides, I grew up seeing family and friends living seemingly comfortable lifestyles. I mean, I, I saw the new cars, I saw the clothes, I saw the TVs, I saw how everybody goes all out for Christmas. So I just thought everybody was all good, like all the time. I grew up with this warped perception of reality that made it appear as if all adults had it together financially and actually knew what the heck they were doing. I was wrong. In fact, I found out the opposite. Most adults don't really know much or anything about money, period, except what it takes to survive and just to get by. And that is a huge reason as to why most of us are living paycheck to paycheck right now. People have gotten too comfortable. I mean, bro, people are starting to be okay with living paycheck to paycheck. They're even starting to casually say, oh yeah, I, I live paycheck to paycheck. Like, like they're okay with it. Like I will never be okay with just having my head above water. And the reason I wish I would have known about the concept of living paycheck to paycheck sooner is because when I did learn about it, I, w I just started wondering why. Like what has to occur in someone's life to make them live paycheck to paycheck? And I'm not talking about families who are in poverty, who have had everything stacked against them in their entire lives. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about the people who had full control over their finances at one point, and then they upped their expenses to the point of living paycheck to paycheck. I couldn't help but wonder, why is he living paycheck to paycheck but there's a brand new car outside? I couldn't understand how someone could be living paycheck to paycheck yet there's a brand new flat screen TV in the living room. I mean, I couldn't help it. I was dumbfounded by this. I could not understand or fathom why some guy would be living paycheck to paycheck yet he's going to work every day demanding a raise, screaming and hollering, I want a raise, I want a raise to give his family a better life only to receive the raise and then up his expenses. I never understood how grown men and women can base their entire expenses off of the income they make off of the overtime at work, only to get mad when the company decides to cut the overtime to, to cut on costs. And now they can't afford to pay their bills because that doesn't happen anywhere. Overtime is supposed to last forever, right? If I would have known about living paycheck to paycheck sooner, I probably would have came to this realization a lot sooner. People live paycheck to paycheck for reasons bigger than just upping their expenses every time they make a little more money or just not having their priorities straight. They live paycheck to paycheck because they're basing all their expenses off of one stream of income. Their bills, their food, their groceries, their transportation, their insurance on one stream of income. There's dozens of expenses that you have to pay, but only one source of income. Does that sound secure to you? You know, growing up, you hear this phrase all the time. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. But let me ask you something. What have you literally been conditioned to do from birth? Put all your eggs into a school. 
Figure out what you want to do by the age of 17, 18 years old. Because that's what you'll be doing for the rest of your life. Graduate. Put all your eggs into a job. But no one ever really explores the idea of what could possibly go wrong with that. No one ever really explores the idea of, you know, what if you change your mind? What if you start school and then you change your mind of what you want your major to be? Or what if you get all the way through school, get a degree, and then get a job, and then you decide that you just don't like the field that you're in? So then you go back to school? Or do you just face a miserable life of continuously working a job that you hate doing? Both are realities, and both happen every single day. How many people prepare you for that? Maybe you like your job. Maybe you enjoy it, so you're going to keep doing it for the next 30 years. But has anyone ever told you what would happen if, if you lost your job or if you got laid off? Has anyone ever told you up front like what you should do to prepare in the event that something catastrophic happens and you lose a significant amount of income? If so, who? Like, whoever told you that if you accept a promotion, how much more time you're gonna have to dedicate to your workplace? Who, who told you about that? They don't talk about that. They don't talk about the amount of time that you have to spend away from your family because you're instead you're trading that time to be at work because now you have more responsibility. But they don't tell you that that, that promotion comes at a cost to you of your time. The time that you could spend doing something else, anything else. I'm asking you this because no one ever told me about that, and I really wish somebody did. I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I took my first job, and guess what? I had to learn every single thing the hard way. You get a degree, your family, your friends congratulate you. They brag about you. My son, my daughter, my friend, my brother just got a degree. Meanwhile, you have no concept of just how long it's going to take for you to pay off all of your student loan debt. You're told 10 years up front, but here's the thing. For most people, it's not for 10 years. It's much more than that. Why does it take more than 10 years? Good question. Because now you just got the job. They're congratulating you, except the salary is not as high as you were expecting. The work that you just got finished putting in in college doesn't match the salary that they're trying to pay you. Man, I'll never forget. It was my first job offer ever. It was this little manufacturing plant out in North Carolina. They tried to offer me $16 an hour for a leadership position, like what I'm doing right now. Bro, straight up, I worked too hard in college to maintain a high GPA and stand out as a student to be settling for a $16 an hour job. Straight up. I, I went to school for engineering and I spent several hours every single year just studying what I could expect to be getting paid outside of college. Studying the median pay and the average pay for engineers within my area and in other areas. And it was all pretty much the same. And I can tell you this, it was more than $16 an hour that I could expect to get paid. Like, I had internships that paid me more than $16 an hour. I felt so uneasy about this whole thing. I called my parents up and told them about it. Hey, so I got a job offer today. I'm just, I'm really not sure how I feel about it. You're not sure how you feel about it? Well, how much they offer you? They offer me $16 an hour. Well, well, that's okay, son. It's just your first job. No, it's not okay. I can't pay off $30,000 worth of student loan debt in two to five years off of those $16 an hour. And that's my exact point. Like, when you grow up hearing stuff like, it's okay, you're young, it's just your first job. That's exactly how you get pulled into the mindset of settling for whatever you can get. And that's when you get wrapped into the mindset of accepting your lack of knowledge because you truly believe that when you get older and when the time is right, you'll make more money and you'll know more about money. Yeah, that's true. If you learn the hard way. But, but you know what that translates to? Putting all your eggs in one basket. That's exactly what you're doing when you work a job and only a job and there's no form of income outside of that. And guess what? When you're going for promotions and you're going for raises and, and working overtime, that's still putting all your eggs in one basket. That's putting all your eggs in that one job that you have because it still is just one job, singular. And you know, I really wish I would have learned about multiple streams of income a lot sooner because 
then you don't have to rely on just one. I wish I would have known just how smart it is to spend time outside of work learning and gaining new skills and improving to the point of becoming more valuable. If I knew about that earlier on, maybe I would have spent more time and energy in my side hustles outside of work in my early career. Maybe I wouldn't have been so stuck on holding on to every little penny that went into my bank account. And maybe I would have been able to bring in thousands of extra dollars a month into my bank account much earlier on. But I'm afraid for me it was much, much deeper than that. You see, the mindset of putting all my eggs into one basket followed me for years, even after I learned the things that I'm talking to you about in this video right now. Even though I grew up being told not to put all my eggs in one basket, I was literally subconsciously doing it for my whole life. And what that translated to was a scarcity mindset, which is a very dangerous mindset to have. You see, I tolerated a job that I hated for years, all because I was convinced of two things. I was convinced that I had to stay in the area that I was in, which is North Carolina. And I was convinced that the job that I had at that time was the best I could do as a young 21 year old. I was convinced that that job was the most high paying job that I could possibly have for the age that I was. So instead of understanding my value, my worth, and my skill set, I allowed other people outside of me to influence me and say, well, where are you gonna go making money like this? There's nowhere in this area that pays like this. That type of verbiage, that type of language reinforces my, my initial thought. And it does so on such a subconscious level, I didn't even realize it. Because when you say, where are you gonna go around here making that kind of money? That's saying you have to stay here. And in this vicinity, this is the most amount of money you're gonna make. So I'm like, oh crap, this is the most I can possibly make, period. It immediately closed my mind to any possibility of going out of state, which caused my mind to go much further into scarcity, which cost me opportunities. And I'm talking about opportunities that would allow me to make more money for less work so that I could do more and live a more free lifestyle. And at the time, that was literally the lifestyle I could only dream of. Do you see how quickly the scarcity mindset can just pour into multiple areas of your life at once? That's what makes it so dangerous. And maybe if I would have learned about making multiple streams of income beforehand, like way earlier in life, maybe I would have unlearned the scarcity mindset early on. Maybe I would have understood my worth and what my options were much earlier on. And the correlation there is having multiple streams of income gives you that confidence. I have options. I have, okay, that that's that income stream failed. I, I got five more. What else you got? It's having that abundance mindset. I mean, I think about this all the time. Like maybe I would have moved across the country much sooner. Maybe I would have started making more money, working less hours much sooner. I don't know. I, I can only speculate. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong or anything. This isn't coming from a place of regret or anything like that. This is coming from a genuine place that I strongly believe that if you arm yourself with this knowledge, especially early on, like early in life, like even before your 20s, I think that you could really set yourself up for an amazing financial future. I'm like if we were taught as kids how to budget instead of focusing so much on how to score high on standardized testing. Could you imagine how much more financially literate our population would be and that's another thing i wish i learned about money at an early age how to budget but that's the thing nowadays when people are taught budgeting methods they kind of just throw a bunch of popular i mean even i've done this throw a bunch of popular budgeting methods out there and kind of just throw stuff at the wall and hope something sticks but what people don't realize is budgeting methods are different for a reason like some will perfectly fit to you and some will not and for some people they have to customize their budget so that it perfectly fits them and their needs that, that's what i had to do i mean seriously when you when it comes to all the popular budgeting methods out there like the 50 30 20 rule the zero based budget it's hard to find a budget that like form fits to a person in such a way that they can just pick it up thoughtlessly pick it up and just go with it and not have any issues or not have any questions. And I firmly believe that because I had a very hard time budgeting when I first got out of college. Again, the method was very foreign to me. <laughs> like I, I, I can't even begin to tell you how many hours I spent researching and testing different budgeting methods or how many times I've just scrapped the budgeting method altogether and just just straight up stop budgeting my money altogether because I felt like nothing was working. 
I've done it a lot. And what I'm getting at here is it can be extremely frustrating. And when you teach someone something from a very young age, they get very good at it by the time they hit 20, 21 years old. So why aren't we teaching kids how to budget? And you know, that's what motivated and inspired me to start creating this budgeting course that's gonna be coming out in 2021 that literally answers all the questions that you have about your money and how to manage it. And, and I cannot wait to release it because it's gonna add so much value. And of course, it's gonna be super in-depth and it's going to completely, perfectly fit you. But anyway, something I learned that I wish I would've learned a lot earlier, which ended up being way more important than budgeting, in my opinion, was when I realized that budgeting and saving are not enough on their own for a great financial future. That was the day I learned about compound interest. I will never forget this. When I was 21 years old, that was when I learned about compound interest and I just remember the feeling that I had inside. It was some weird mixture of anger and excitement. I was excited because when I learned about compound interest, it was something that blew my mind like right away and I was just so intrigued and obsessed with it. But I was upset because I didn't learn it sooner in life. Long story short, one day we were in class and the professor asked us if we'd rather have $1 million up front or a penny doubled for 30 days. And of course, everyone, like 90% of the class said, hey, I just want my $1 million up front. What's a penny double gonna do anyways? And that was because the class lacked understanding of compound interest. And just to put it into perspective, the age range of that class ranged from 20 to 30 years old, okay? But what most of the class failed to understand was taking the $1 million right now over the penny doubled for 30 days was actually a really bad move because that meant they would be missing out on $4,368,709.21. And I know it sounds crazy, so I'm going to put a diagram on the screen right now to show you the math behind it. And you know, once our professor broke down the math that I'm showing you right now, everybody's jaws just dropped. And that was my introduction to compound interest. And ever since I've been obsessed. And the cool thing about compound interest is it actually taught me several different financial lessons at once. I mean, it's taught me lessons about how debt works, how investing works. It's even taught me lessons about delaying my gratification because the longer you let your money sit in an account that gains interest that compounds over time, that means you're going to be having that much more money in the future. I mean, when, when you were first introduced to credit cards, what advice did you get? Were you told to just pay off everything completely every single time? Or were you told just to you know make small payments here and there? If I had to guess, you were probably told that you have the option of making the minimum payment every single month if you didn't have the funds to pay off the entire thing, right? That, that way you avoid late fees. Well, the interest on the balance that you owe on your credit card, that compounds. And for most credit cards, it actually compounds daily. So despite the fact that you may be paying the minimum payment, guess what? That card is still gaining interest on what you owe. Did they tell you that? They didn't tell me that. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. How many conversations did you have growing up about delaying your gratification so you can get what you want to get in life later? Because that works for saving money and investing your money because either way you look at it, you it's going to take a while before you see the results of your hard work of putting money here and there and watching it grow over time. What about the stock market? When did you learn about the stock market? You know what? I have an even better question. When did you learn about a 401k, a Roth IRA, you know, like your retirement fund? I didn't really start learning about this stuff until I was 21, 22 years old. And even though that's not super late, I still wish I would have known a lot sooner. Do you know how many people in their 40s that are just now setting up their 401ks and they've been working for most of their lives? I know some personally, and it is scary to think about because I, I wonder, where did all that money go that would have been invested into their 401k? Where, where'd it go? And, and let, let's say that they were responsible and they saved the money that they would have been investing. Okay, well, now you're still missing out on tens, thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's not gaining, it's not gaining interest. Y'all know savings accounts don't really gain interest like that. Like a good savings account would have like a 0.05 or a 0.06% interest rate. I wish I knew about these topics much earlier in life. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.
stay cold.